Hello, thank you for joining us on the re-ride. There's just one of you, hmm? Don't worry, there's just one of me too. Are you new to the re-ride? Of course, my apologies. You clearly look like you know what you're doing, but protocol obligates me to ask. As you no doubt know, these are your buzzers. Please allow me to remind you that this is a non-profit fan project in no way associated with Jackbox Games. Please wait until the elevator has come to a full stop before you disembark. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide! This episode of The Rewrite is sponsored by the Ice Hypercube Dispenser. Add a new dimension to your cold drinks. Offer not available in worlds with three spatial dimensions or fewer. And here's your host, the man who brought sexy back, Conan Blankenberg. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rewrite. So you like your toast burnt. whoop dee doo Other people enjoy eating food, but, you know, whatever floats your carcinogens. <laughs> Preheat your ovens and fire up your stoves, because today we're going to learn all about the wonders of the kitchen. Time to ride. Come on, big bucks, no whammy, buzz in. Let's go, let's do it. Go, go, go. Here's what we have to offer. Ain't nothing frosty about this frosting. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. What temperature would I have to preheat my oven to if I wanted to bake myself a fluffy cake with molten bismuth frosting? 270 degrees Fahrenheit, 270 degrees... I think you may have taken the term lava cake a little too seriously. <laughs> Smart people choose this. Bismuth melts at 270 degrees Celsius or 518 degrees Fahrenheit. And... It does taste a little metally, but... I think there's also a subtle touch of citrus and a delightful note of... Oh my god, I think I'm about to have a seizure. Alright, we'll need some cash to play for. Hit your buzzer and pick it. Ooh-wee, that's not bad at all. And here's your category. Do not fry this at home. $7,190 go to the first person who can give me a right answer to this question. How long did the people of the world have to eat their french fries dry and drab until tomato ketchup was finally invented? About as long as the initial run of Futurama, about as long as between Star Wars Episode 6 and 1, about as long as between World Wars 1 and 2... This is not the answer you're looking for. Oh, wait, no, it actually is. Hmm, Alright, good job. The first recipe for french fries as we know them appeared in 1795, the first recipe for tomato ketchup in 1812, a gap of 17 years, which comes pretty close to the gap between the originals and the prequels of Star Wars at 16 years. Ah, good old ketchup, you wonderful culinary delight. You truly do work on everything, from spaghetti to pizza to... Hey, what if this Italian man just enter my boot? Ow! Smash the buzzer when you see the good stuff fly by, let's go! It's time for... Ketchup with the times! Speaking of ketchup... Say it's before 1812, but you still really, really want ketchup with your french fries. Considering what was commonly known as ketchup before then, what would you have to make do with? Salted mushroom mash, pureed brown trout, slices of banana bread, or no ke Oh dear, we seem to have run out of salted mushroom mash. Oh heavens no! How are we going to make our ketchup, my dear Tiddly Wings? Pip pip cheerio, I'll just run down to the market and get us some new mushrooms. Oh, that would be jolly good! Ketchup historically came from the United Kingdom and was originally prepared with mushroom and salt. Well, at least I'm not going to be thwacked in the face by an angry Italian man for putting mushrooms and salt on my pizza. Okie dokie, it's value time. Smash your buzzer when you see a good- Shamalama ding dong zinger dinger. Okay, alright. I think we all know what this is. Oh, no way! Yes way, it's gibberish. It's a gibberish question, if that wasn't obvious enough. Alright then. 
Let's uh, take a look at the actual gibberish category for this question then. Out of the line, into the trash. Now keep in mind, the sooner you buzz in, the more cash you can pick up. All right, focus your eyes on the screen, forget the punctuation, and then tell me what common kitchen phrase this gibberish rhymes with. Called in step, er, a waste. It's a matter of personal preference. You know, do it your way. And some vital ingredients in cooking. Add seasoning as you see fit. You can definitely see it fit to push that button now, by the way, or all that money is also gonna be a waste. What's the matter? You don't do your own cooking? Nana still make all the meals in your house? If you've ever looked at a recipe from anywhere, you always see this line at the very end of it. Before serving, called in step or a waste. Salt and pepper to taste. Or in the case of many a lousy cook, salt and pepper until every sensation of taste has been replaced with a sensation of salt and pepper. Okay, gonna need a value from ya. Fucker up for... The new sensation frying the nation. Oh, oh, have I told you about my brand new air fryer yet? I'm telling you, best purchase I've ever made. In fact, I don't think I'll ever need any other kitchen apparatus again for the rest of my life. I'm gonna revolve my entire identity around this thing now. Say I wanted to join an air fryer owner's club, but instead I accidentally join an air fryer owner's club. Considering the multiple meanings of the word, which of these pieces of small talk would I definitely not hear during- no, the Friars are indeed a group of islands off the coast of Tasmania, and you, I believe, are sinking. <laughs> well, this sure ain't a club that you will ever be a part of. Friars are members of a religious order, a group of islands near Tasmania, and a species of butterfly. It's not the name of anything that would orbit around in space. And honestly, I'd still rather own an actual air fryer than any of those other things. Because, mm, those chicken wings. There to die for. Ah, oh, heavenly crisp. Come and get yourself a nice allowance. I peeled myself out of bed this morning for that. Ugh, the category. Which came first, the barbecue sauce or the marinade? Speaking of chicken wings, why can chickens fly? It's because their wings flap real fast, it's because their wings are lighter than air, it's because their wings have feathers, or chickens can't fly. It's as simple as that, they just flap them real fast, faster than gravity pulls them to the floor. As good as chicken wings are, I find myself more partial to a well-seasoned chicken finger. Oh, that makes my taste buds fly. Value time! Oh, nice! And here is your category. A chilling concoction. So I bought myself this new fridge recently, and I gotta say, this thing is good! F***ing Jesus Christ! That scared the shit out of me, always with those toasters, man! I completely forgot I even set one up! Sheesh! So, what just happened to me? My cingulate cortex caused me to freak the hell out, the toaster pawned the crap out of my pawns, the loud noise set off a reflex in my hippocampus, or the toaster triggered a jaw. The amygdala is one of the key actors in the auditory startle response, which is pretty much what this stupid toaster just made me go through. Well, anyway, glad we cleared that up. Now, let's get back to that question I wanted to ask about my fracking. Oh, who set that thing back off? Hit buzzer, select value, it's easy as ABC, let's go! Now playing... A chilling concoction for real this time. Anyway, fridges. Fridge question. Say I bought a new refrigerator that was made by a refrigerator mother. What would supposedly be true about her offspring? It would be likely to develop autism, its extremities would be prone to hypothermia, any milk that comes out of it would be strangely shelf-stable, or its core temperature would drop. Yeah, that's the one. The refrigerator mother theory is an early psychological theory that claimed the cause of autism is the lack of maternal emotional warmth during infancy. It's all been proven to be a bunch of bull these days, though. Oh, and before anyone expects me to get startled by the toaster again, not this time. I'm keeping a real good watch on this little fella, and I know exactly when it's gonna- ah! What the- Who did- 
microwave with the ah! F it's all up to you go big or go home buzz in or it's fast it's hot it's roadkill <laughs> Short reminder, buzz in when you see the answer that correctly connects the current pair on the screen. And as always, there's some bonus cash to be won at the end of the round, so stay sharp. Alright, let's floor this sucker. Skin condition, and doing it to water turns it to steam. Coffee is a hot one, lemonade a cold one. form of deodorant, and common form of pesticide. Blank at your steak, and bone blank. Blank zone at aquatic shows, and Blank Mountain at Disneyland. Uh, ah! Score! It's painful Brain Blank and DC villain Mr. Blank. hair, and colors food. Okay, now it's time for the bonus question. What do all of the correct answers have in common? Are they all kitchen equipment brands, popular desserts, common food additives, Things you do with water! That's what I like to see! There you go! Good work out there! And now off you go to the showers! Now a quick look at your score. Mm, yep, looks like it's still there. Fantastic. Let's go. Hit your buzzer when a good value flies by and we'll be playing! Cool, oh, cool. And now it's time for a little question I like to call... The obligatory Hell's Kitchen question. Okie dokie, just to remind you of the stakes, right answer will net you $17.91, wrong answer will cost you that. Here we go. If I were to rate Gordon Ramsay a solid 6 out of 6 on the Ramsay scale, what would that tell you about him? He's devoid of any microorganisms, his surface is perfectly smooth, he's out cold. Here's two pieces of toast, I'm sure you know exactly what to do with them. <laughs> Correct answer, show yourself. In medicine, the Ramsey scale is a method of assessing how deeply sedated a patient is, with a 1 meaning they're wide awake and a 6 that they're fast asleep. Incidentally, a 6 on the Ramsey scale is somewhere around where I usually end up when I try to watch an episode of Hell's Kitchen. I've got a question for you if you've got a value for me. almost over, but first, here's your dessert. My oh my, I sure love pie. This jack attack only uses locally sourced ingredients. Good luck.
That's all she wrote, and here's where you stand. Ooh, impressive. Too bad no one's here to congratulate you.